Hey everyone, this is TG from ToyGander.com and today we're going to review some knockoff Batman minifigures. Let's go ahead and take a gander. If you guys are interested in getting any of the figures we review on ToyGander, be sure to check out ToyGander.com. I will put a link in the description below. Now first up we have is Catwoman. I think we're off to a great start with these figures. Looking at, at this one, they did a nice job. I love the silver lining that they put throughout this entire character. They have it on the torso, they have it on the legs, on the side, and even on the back. The back looks really detailed. The utility belt that it comes with is a separate piece you put on there. Now I will say the connection, because the utility belt, the connection between the legs and the torso is a little bit light, but it's not too noticeable. Another part that I really like is the face has two prints. One in the front, one in the back, that's like the worried look. So that's a great job there. They even did the silver paint along the eyepiece. I love that. Now one of the things that I really noticed uh, as a difference between LEGO and this knockoff brand is this whip. Now this whip, normally LEGO likes to use this bendable plastic, and I really don't like bendable plastic on the LEGOs. And this one right here, they actually use this very durable plastic. So I like the fact that uh, this brand actually used this, and it just seems more durable. So I'm going to put that in her hand, and we'll move on to the next one. Now we're moving on to Batman. I've reviewed many different types of, of Batman for LEGO. Official LEGO Batman, knockoff Batman, custom Batman. And honestly, this one lines up pretty nicely. It's pretty high up on the list as far as quality goes. The, the number one difference that I think between knockoff brand and official Batman or the official Lego, is the cape. And I prefer the knockoff cape to the official one because it's a lot more durable. And it just feels like it's it's a lot more sturdy. Uh, other than that, it's very close to what the original one looks like. Another uh, difference between this one, the utility belt for Batman versus Catwoman. The utility belt's are actually a, light, a lot tighter fit. So when you uh, put the torso onto the legs, it actually is going to stay on. So I, I do like that feature. Overall, Pretty much the exact same thing you would expect from a uh, knockoff Lego Batman. Now we have Calendar Man. So Calendar Man is a perfect example of why you buy official Lego and not knockoff. And the main reason is, is the dual molding. Now, for those who don't know, dual molding is when they put two different types of plastic, they mold them together, or more than two different types of plastic, mold them together to create like the legs. Well, knockoff brands don't typically do that. What they'll do is they'll put paint over one solid color, and it really shows up when you try and replicate it in the red. Well, red on white specifically, they have to go over several, several times in order to get something that looks halfway decent. And it really just was slopped on here. It's uh, smeared on the top of the legs here. It's really light on the top here. It doesn't blend well together with the whole figure. And even the white on the red torso doesn't look great. I know I didn't put the cape on right, but honestly I didn't care because the, the character just looks so bad. Really bad representation. And this is, uh, if you're going to get this character, I would definitely get it in the official blind bag Lego set. Next up we have Joker. So I've reviewed this Joker a couple different times, and this is, I think, the third one of these that I've actually got. He actually looks pretty good. I mean, as far as a knockoff character goes, he's done very well. Uh, the little coattails right here is actually done in a thinner material that LEGO would have used, or a very similar type. And it uh, translates well because it needs to be more flexible than, like, a regular cape would be. So they did that pretty well. Uh, even the front printing on the, f on the torso here looks pretty good, and the legs. It's done very accurately. The only uh, gripe that I have about this one is the eyebrows don't quite match the hair because it's, it's a little bit lighter than what I would have liked to see. But other than that, it's a pretty good uh, knockoff figure. Next up, we have Robin. I'm seeing a consistent theme with some of these characters. Now, on the surface, this character actually looks pretty close to the original Lego figure. However, 
when you start just looking at a little, little bit more detail, actually when you have it in your hand, it is a lot cheaper than uh, what you would a normal Lego feels like. Now, first thing, you can see his arm doesn't quite fit in there, and I really try to jam it in there, but uh, it, the, the plastic's like not molded, or it's a little bit extra molding in there, so it doesn't completely fit within it. Second thing is, and the, the big thing, is the hat piece just really is barely sitting on there. It doesn't connect very well at all, and it goes down a little bit further. Now, I have an official figure right here, and you can kind of see the difference on it. Just the quality in between the two. This one is so much better, so much better. The eyes are nice and bright. The the it just it, the whole the real hat piece just fits on there a whole lot better than this one does. Looking at the back, the back is is printed a little bit light. Just the plastic on this one feels a little bit cheaper. Now it does look like the no see the legs are not dual molded. Same thing. They put red paint on there, although that looks pretty close. Uh, the arms is where it really shows up a difference. You can see that where the arm transitions into the torso. Really, uh, again, a, a poor quality one at that, and it includes a gun as well. Now I have a Two-Face figure. I know this is not the one from the Lego Batman movie, but I saw it and I wanted to see how it compared to an actual Lego figure. So this is actually a pretty decent character. Looking at it, the face print is really nice. It actually shows up shows up really nice in there. They they did a nice printing on the different colors and the yellows and the purples. I like the transition between all the colors. Uh, the overall figure looks pretty decent. The only thing that I'd say is the hat piece. Right in the upper corner there, you can see a little bit of the, the other color showing through. But uh, other than that, it's actually done very well. And I do like this figure. I like this Harvey or the Two-Face versus the one that's like black and white. I think this one just has more character. Next up we have is Harley Quinn. This character has a lot going on. There's a lot of different print in there, and it's actually pretty hard, I would imagine, to try and replicate this right. You know, as an average, they get an okay grade, but uh, looking at the hair, the hair piece is probably the best piece out of it. It's just the closest as far as painting goes, but even then, you can kind of see a little black got smushed on here, a little red pops up through there. The printing on the back looks decent, but the printing on the front, it really starts, the colors start bleeding together on the bottom there. It's just not bright. It's not the same type of quality that you would expect from Lego. Uh, that's because these guys are definitely not on par with Lego. The, the bat looks overall okay, uh, although again, the painting on the white, the white on the red, just doesn't show up as bright as what it normally should be. It, it's an okay character. I really do like uh, this character. I just would like to see some better better print throughout it. Now we have Poison Ivy. This figure's got some great points about it. Uh, the main thing that I noticed is there's so much detail in here, and they actually replicated that detail very nicely. I love the detail on the front. The, the, the uh, beige color here, or the flesh tone color on the top of the character is, is not as bright as it, what it should be, so it, it is a harsh transition from the torso to the head. Uh, but the, the arms are actually done pretty well, even though they're, they're painted on there. It looks pretty decent. The, the legs actually look pretty good, too. The hair stands out as the best part of this character. They did the hair very nicely, and it's very close to Lego. The biggest problem that I have with this is probably the skirt. The skirt really is tough to get on there, and it doesn't feel... Uh, nearly as natural as what it should be was when you put the skirt on. It seems like it's a, it's not cut quite as short or it's cut a little bit too long so when you overlap it it just kind of flares out too much. Uh, other than that uh, the back printing the back printing is like the same thing just the flesh tone don't show doesn't show up as bright. This is another character not in the movie this is Joker Batman. I absolutely love this character. This is the best one in this set, and honestly, it really stands out, guys. 
Uh, just as far as the quality goes, it is by far the best. Uh, let me zoom in here because I really want to see. There's so much going on with this character. I don't want to miss anything. But you can see, obviously, the big old Joker sign right there. He has, uh, like, diamonds and spades and all the hearts down there uh, on his utility belt. That looks fantastic. He has, like, a little smiley face here. I think they used the Jared Leto Joker. He has a little smiley face on his boot. It says, ha, 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 like, just written all over the place. They have some great arm printing. Let's see. I don't. I can't read that. If you guys can read that, let me know. Put it in the comments below because that is really. Oh, uh, maybe it's Joker back backwards. Um, he has some great printing on the back. Really solid character, and I think this is even dual molded, which is really impressive for them to do. Looking at his face. Now this shows up. This actually helmet shows up a lot brighter on screen than it than it is in real life. Uh, the helmet's a little bit darker and it actually goes very nicely, it ties very nicely with the gloves and the feet. But looking at that, they use the Gerald Leto head. Uh, I don't like the, the face so much, but uh, when you put it, cover it up with the mask, it actually looks pretty good. Let's cover it back up. And he even, is in, even includes a grappling hook. Just a fantastic character and I really like this one. And here are all the characters together. Time for a few shout-outs. Paul Anthony Gasper, Christopher Guzman, Shenko, and Hayden Robles. Here is a thumbs up to you. Thank you so much for watching Toy Gander. And now, guys, it's that time of the video. There is one figure somewhere on the screen that is just not quite right. So the first person to find out which figure that is and puts it in the comments below, I will give you a shout out in the next video I do. Guys, please click that thumbs up button. It definitely does help out the channel. And don't forget to subscribe. There's tons of videos out there like this. And until next time, you can help us take a gander.